Tayo pa po kong sasabihin na pagbati at sa mga masayang uh, pagpapasalamat. But uh, this time, we just would like to uh, uh, begin with an opening prayer. Okay. So, nihintay. wala pa pala si Brother Roquel. Oo. So, di bali, tayo yung mag, uh, magsisimula na sa ating uh, panalangin. And uh, uh, we'll just turn to the Lord for a while and offer this to to the Lord. In the name of the Father. And of the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Panginoon, nagpapasalamat po kami sa araw na ito na ibinigay mo sa amin upang kami ay magkasama-sama muli. Uh, magdadalawang taon na po na kami uh, nag-co-conversation at natutuwa po kami, Lord, na may mga kasama kami sa Cagayan de Oro, sa Palo, sa Cebu, at iba't ibang mga lugar upang kami mag- ma- makapakinig lamang sa mga uh, issue ng bawat isa Mahalagang issue, Panginoon, na dapat naman naming nalalaman. Lord, be with us this afternoon. In a special way, we lift to you, O Lord, uh, uh, Kalyoni, to help us and inspire us so that as lay people, we will become more aware of the things that affect our daily lives. And that truly being a lay person is not only for uh, the spiritual things, but really for the entire, the wholeness of our lives, O Lord. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Father, and the Son, the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Ako po'y parang nakikipag-usap kay Lord dahil talagang masaya ako. Talaga natutuwa ako dito sa ating samahan ngayon. At uh, welcome to everyone, um, especially those who, have been, who attended the last National Lady Week and also those who attended the Biennial Convention. So maraming maraming salamat po. And uh, at this point, we also would like to... Uh, to uh, call on our uh, incoming our incoming uh, chairman of the Episcopal Commission on Lay Apostolate okay for a welcome <laughs> message uh, may I uh, have the honor to introduce uh, his excellency bishop enrique macaraeg thank you uh, brother jun uh, your excellency bishop roderick uh, roderick pabilio uh, our distinguished uh, guest Brothers and sisters in Christ, magandang hapon sa inyong lahat. The topic of our online conversation uh, today is uh, securing the food, energy, and patrimony of our nation. Uh, let me ask you to bring to mind the Lord's uh, prayer, the Our Father, especially uh, the words, uh, give us today our daily bread. Uh, part of the prayer that our Lord taught us is uh, the petition to ask God for our daily bread. Primarily, it refers to the heavenly bread of the Eucharist, but the church uh, also consistently teaches us that it also refers to the actual food that we did uh, each day. The Catechism of the Catholic Church uh, explains, but the presence of those who hunger because they lack bread opens up another profound meaning of this petition. The drama of hunger in the world calls uh, Christians who pray sincerely to exercise responsibility toward their brethren, both in their personal behavior and in the solidarity with the human family. And further, it's, it also says, in the Beatitudes, poverty is the virtue of sharing. It calls us to communicate and share both material and spiritual goods, not by coercion, but out of love, so that the abundance of some may remedy the needs of others. Uh, if there is something we should learn from this current pandemic, it is that uh, in the final analysis, it is food that all of us will need. Hence, uh, food security should be of primary concern of any government administration. When international travels and transportation cease, when banking system slows down, when lockdowns are imposed, Food should be safely produced and delivered to the people within the boundary of the nation. 
if nations and governments would spend so much time, energy, and resources to counter terrorism, the terror of hunger and thirst should be addressed first. By now, food and energy security would mean sustainability. We should be able to pass on to the next generations a secured means of food and energy. The patrimony of our nation, the natural resources, and its uh, cultural and historical heritage have to be protected and handed on to the next generations. To be good stewards of the present is to sustain and to secure the future. Pope Francis uh, in Laudato Si has these words to say, Christian spirituality proposes an alternative understanding of the quality of life and encourages a prophetic and contemplative lifestyle, one capable of deep enjoyment, free of the obsession with consumption. It is the conviction that less is more. A constant flood of new consumer goods can baffle the heart and prevent us from cherishing each thing and each moment. Christian spirituality proposes a growth marked by moderation and the capacity to be happy with little. It is return to that simplicity which allows us to stop and appreciate the small things, to be grateful for the opportunities which life affords us, to be spiritually detached from what we possess, and not to succumb to sadness for what we lack. This implies avoiding the dynamic of dominion and the mere accumulation of pleasures. Quote and unquote from Laudatus C. Number 20, 222. Thank you. Maraming maraming salamat po. Uh... Bishop Makaraig. Doon pala po sa sinabi nyo na busog na po kami. <laughs> Napakaganda po ah, nung no. pasimula ninyo na dito sa na ma- maintindihan namin na ito ay talagang kasama sa panalangin natin. Our daily bread. At uh, bukod sa pagtutuon sa heavenly uh, needs natin, it is really also our desire to really be provided for uh, by the earth, by the world with actual food. At yan po ay isa sa mga pag-uusapan po natin sa araw pong ito. And uh, with that, I would like to again just welcome those who just came in. Welcome po sa inyong lahat dito po sa ating LICO conversation on securing food, energy, and the patrimony of our nation. At siguro po mamaya habang nagpapaliwanag kong ating uh, resource speaker, okay, ay ma- malalaman ninyo kung, kung bakit gano, kung gano napakahalaga, napakahalaga na uh, ma maintindihan natin itong mga maintindihan natin itong mga ipag, pinaglalaban ng ating resource speaker. At this point, I uh, would like to introduce now our um, guest speaker. Tatanggalin ko lang po yung spotlight, ah. hindi ko malaman kung uh, ako yung naka, bakit sa akin sa akin ba naka anito. Okay. Okay. Uh, at this point, would like to introduce to you our resource speaker, and uh, he has achieved so much in his life. And uh, sisimulan ko po by saying that uh, uh, bata pa po ay nakikipaglaban na to sa area ng uh, ka- karapatan ng mga magsasaka, mga uh, magagawang uh, sa bukid at mga mangingisda at uh, uh, Hindi po siguro exaggeration na habang lumalaki siya eh, ang almusal niya ay uh, karapatan ng mga <laughs> maralita at ang tanghalian niya at ang mga habang natutulog sa ang naririnig niya palagi. 
ay kung paano ipaglalaban ang karapatan ng ating mga mga magbubukid, mga mangingisda, okay? at mga magsasaka sapagkat ito po ay uh, minana rin niya sa kanyang ama na siyang naging founder ng Federation of Free Farmers. Naging isa po siyang uh, congressman at uh, hindi ko po alam kung siya ay uh, tumatakbo ngayon as a party list. Uh, kung, may, kung kayo man ay uh, nominee ngayon, pakibanggit na rin mamaya. Okay? But at this point, we'd like to welcome our resource speaker, uh, Mr. Leonardo Montemayor, or we can call him Calioni. Magandang hapon po, Calioni. Uh, maraming salamat, Kajun. At uh, good afternoon din po sa lahat ng mga ating kuhan kasama ngayon. Lalong-lalo po ang ating mga obispo, si Bishop Pabilio at saka si Bishop Makaraeg. Uh, ito pong kuhan, uh, may claim paper na pipresenta ko. Ito po ay pinagkaisa po ng several groups. Uh, I consider it history kasi first time po na, na pag, nag, nagsasama-sama po yung iba't ibang mga sektor na may kinalaman po sa agrikultura at saka pangisdaan. Ito po yung maliban po sa aming samahan sa Federation of Free Farmers, eh, kasama rin po namin yung isa pong uh, bagong tatag na koalisyon composed of about 99 kwan, farmers, fishers groups, and rural development uh, organizations called Bayanihan sa Agrikultura. And then another big coalition is the Alianza Agricultura. It consists of about 42 groups, uh, again, from the far agriculture and fishery sector. Ang chairman po niyan ay si Ernie Ordonez, na dati pong uh, undersecretary ng DTI, and then later on, naging undersecretary din po ng agriculture. And then uh, the, Kwan, the, the next group is the agribusiness group. Uh, it's called the Philippine Chamber of Agriculture and Food Incorporated. It's chaired by Danny Fausto. Uh, Danny is very much into the dairy one, industry, especially on Carabaos. So isa po siya sa mga pioneers dyan. Uh, so sila po yung aming agribusiness connection. Mga provider po ng mga seeds, processing equipment, international markets, etc. And then the final member of our group is the uh, Coalition for Agriculture Modernization of the Philippines, CAM. Uh, pinangungunan po yan ni Dr. Emil Javier. Emil was uh, a former secretary of science and technology, and he is a national scientist. Okay, so their group is composed of academicians, mga economists, mga professional uh, people, uh, who are very much also into the agriculture sector. So we bring together farmers, primary um, fishermen, uh, rural development groups, agribusiness, and of course the professionals, the uh, economists, uh, and so on. So I said, so as I said kanina, medyo historic po ito. Kasi ngayon lang po kami nagsasama-sama ng ganito. At I would say dalawa pong pan, events ang nagtulak sa amin na magsama-sama uh, Yung una po, siyempre, yung pandemic. So I think the pandemic has, is forcing us to rethink. Uh, how do we do things? Do we still uh, do things the same way as before when it comes to, you know, providing our food? Or do, uh, since uh, as a result of the pandemic, ang hirap natin mag-access ng pagkain sa labas ng bansa. Di ba? Ang daming mga kwan ngayon ng uh, logistical difficulties both not only inside because of the quarantine but also even outside the country. So isa po yan magtulak. So what, what, what is our message in the face of this pandemic as far as agriculture and food uh, is concerned? And then the other one is the election season. So nag-isip, nag-isip din po kami, is there a way that we can come up with a relatively one brief document which will summarize all the important things we want to, to say and then uh, present this to the candidates, especially the presidential, vice and the senatorial candidates, so that they will give agriculture uh, much more than the usual motherhood statements. So we want, we want something more, more significant coming from the uh, candidates, especially by way of commitment. 
So that, that's the reason why after some discussion among we, ourselves, we came out with this brief paper. It's basically two pages long, consisting of 12 major recommendations. At susundan po namin ito ng more specific ba, action points or, action, or uh, program suggestions in the weeks to come. But for now, major policies muna po ang aming kwan uh, gustong ipresenta sa ating pong, hindi lang po sa mga kandidato, pero po sa ating buong, buong bansa. Okay, so uh, kasama ko po dito na tutulong sa akin si Juan Joseph. Joseph, can you already flash the first slide? So ito po yung pamagat ng aking kwan, ipresenta, uh, Transform Agriculture for Food Security, Job Creation and Balance Growth. Uh, next slide, please, Joseph. So, sa aming pong introduction, sinasabi po namin dito, a major development challenge facing the next government is transforming Philippine agriculture into one, an engine of economic growth, two, a job generator, three, a stabilizer in, in, as far as social and economic uh, aspects are concerned, and to provide for the country's food security. Uh, before COVID, the sector had been stagnating. Under the pandemic, agriculture has been weakened further by transport and logistical breakdowns, aimless import liberalization, lack of health facilities, and poor distribution of ayuda to our rural masses. Next, please. We demand a reversal of the situation. Agriculture can and should play a leading role in national economic recovery. And more importantly, in ensuring social and economic development for all. You will recall that uh, we had Dr. Shell Habito, uh, who by the way is a member of CAMP, as one of our speakers in the last uh, convention of LICO. And he met, told us that he considers to uh, areas to be the drivers of economic re recovery from pandemic. He mentioned the digital, the digital economy, and he also mentioned agriculture. But to, to achieve the potential of agriculture, urgent policy reforms must be institutionalized and implemented with decisiveness. Next, please, Joseph. Oh, so ito po yung aming kwan overarching objective uh, modernization and industrialization of agriculture. With full implementation of agrarian reform, natural resources, and fisheries reform as the keys to achieve food security, job creation, poverty eradication, and balanced urban development. Okay, so very important po. We achieve uh, prosperity, economic growth, but it must be the benefits of that growth should be widely spread. And that's why we place emphasis on agrarian reform, natural resources, and fisheries reform. Okay, so next please, Joseph. Uh, very briefly, ang sitwasyon po sa ating sektor ngayon, around 25 to 30 percent ng ating labor force ngayon, which is about 40 or 40 to 44 million workers, about one-fourth of that is composed of small farmers, fishers, forest settlers, indigenous peoples, uh, etc. The direct contribution of agriculture and fisheries to our gross domestic product is 10%. But we have to take into account that if you include processing, that would add another 10%. And then ancillary services, you know, transport, etc. would add another 15 So the uh, total contribution of the sector, if you consider all of these factors, would be around 35% to the whole economy. In contrast, the share of agriculture in the Philippines out of the total national government budget is very is minuscule, 2% lang po, compared to 5 to 6% in Vietnam and 3 to 4% in Thailand. Many farmers still do not enjoy secure land tenure. The catch of small fisher folk is limited by, by continuing encroachment by outsiders into municipal waters and fishing areas, including within our own territorial waters, 
such as the West Philippine Sea. Next, please. Okay. Inadequate agricultural support services, limited processing of raw produce, and inefficient marketing, transport, shipping of farm products have brought about low agricultural growth of 1.6%. It's even below our population growth rate. Low productivity, poor incomes for producers, shortages in local supply, and high prices for consumers. The Philippines, unfortunately, is a net food importing country. Furthermore, sustainability of production is threatened by land conversion, degradation of natural resources, and climate change. The result is widespread poverty. Three out of every four poor Filipinos are found in the rural areas. The opportunities in jobs in the rural areas is very limited and the quality also is not good. Hence, the big development disparity between rural and urban and the consequent mass exodus to urban centers remains unabated. Next, please. So these are our 12 major recommendations. I'll go quickly through them. Yung pong number one, pinaka-importante, we have to recognize agriculture and fisheries as the main guarantor of food security and foundation of economic recovery. Now, of course, when you say recognize agriculture and fisheries, the main actors here will be the farmers and the fisher folk and the indigenous peoples. They should be treated as our heroes and the saviors of our country and they should not be, be treated as parang mga pulubi lamang po sila o targets lang po sila ng ating mga uh, kwan, ayuda. They are the, they're gonna be the real saviors of our economy. Pangalawa po, we have to increase tremendously the budget for agriculture and fisheries. So we propose the budget for agriculture and fisheries should at least be double what it is today. And then we'd like to spread out that uh, bud increased budget, not only for rice, but over across the various commodities. So corn, coconut, high value crops, fisheries, horticulture, and so on and so forth. Number three, we want to emphasize self-reliance in domestic production. But this has to be accompanied with greater productivity, profitability, and protection from pandemics, calamities, and climate change events. Importation must be a last resort. Okay, so number four. Oh, medyo nabagit ko na po kanina dito, dapat magkaroon din ng substantial and fair support aside from rice to commodities like what I mentioned earlier. And to do that, we propose, uh, we, uh, we, we earmark or reserve uh, tariff collections from sectors affected by imported commodities. So in the case of rice po kasi ngayon, ang mga tariff collections from imported rice, they accrue to a fund called the Rice Competitiveness Enhancement, Enhancement Fund, which is used to uh, improve the uh, efficiency, productivity, and competitiveness of the rice farmers. So similarly, dapat po sana yung mga kinokolekta po nating taripa sa imported na pork, dapat maibalik din po natin sa pork industry so that, so that they can recover from the African swine uh, one, uh, fever and then they can make their, their sector much more efficient. And then number five, we have to shift from monocropping to localized. When I say localized, yung one, uh, bar barangay level, community level. And then the production must be diversified. Wag lang yung, yung palaging bigas or palay dapat may gulay, etc. And sustainable production systems. Sustainable, it must be respectful of the environment. And systems, I emphasize the word systems. And the approach must be community-based, whether in clusters, whether in cooperatives, when we uh, go into production, value addition, and marketing. And then we have to fast-track, uh, improve rural credit, 
guarantee and crop insurance systems, mechanization, digital technology, and other appropriate innovations. Number six, uh, we need to invest more in infrastructure, uh, rural, such as roads, uh, etc. Marketing infrastructure, post-harvest infrastructure, ang laki po ng waste states po dahil uh, pagkatapos pong anihin yung palay o yung mais, wala pong tamang drying kwan, equipment, wala pong tamang storage facilities, ang laki po ng waste states. We could have avoided importing rice if we only address the post-harvest losses in this, in this particular one, commodity, as well as in the other commodities. And also for agri-fisheries, we need a lot of uh, processing equipment to be put in place. Aside from infrastructure, information systems, markets, etc., and competitive domestic markets. Okay. So, ayaw po natin yung ang laki-laki po ng ating in-import na bigas, pero pagdating naman sa merkado, mahal pa rin yung bigas. So, nadihado na po yung ating rice farmers from the over-importation Yet, the consumers are not really benefiting by way of really affordable rice prices. So, somewhere in between, mukhang mayroong nagmamonopolize po ng mga ganansya wala po sa importasyon ng bigas. Number seven, we consider this a priority. It's time that we create a Department of Fisheries and Marine Resources. Our uh, territorial waters, especially if you uh, uh, take into account uh, our our one exclusive economic zone is many more times the area of our land, and yet fisheries just has a bureau under the under the Department of Agriculture. It is time to create a department so that we can make full use of the resources, uh, not only fisheries but other resources as well in our uh, ter- expanding uh, exclusive economic zone, including the West Philippine Sea. And we have to assert our sovereign rights in the WPS. Number eight, important rin po yung magkaroon po ng tunay na partnership between the national government and the local government units. We have to capacitate our LGUs to be able to provide more support to agriculture and fisheries. And one of these important innovations we would like to really push is the province-led agriculture and fisheries extension system or PAFES. Uh, next, please, Joseph. Okay, so ito po yung last four sa aming recommendations. Uh, we need to institutionalize genuine representation and involvement of farmers, fishers, and other stakeholders at all levels of planning and monitoring. At saka sana po yung mga ilalagay po ng presidente uh, at saka ng iba pong mga sekretary sa mga iba't ibang mga konseho po na may kaugnayan po sa agricultural fisheries. Huwag naman po yung dahil lamang sa malapit po sila sa pointing power or politically uh, influential sila, dapat may kakayahan po, po talaga na nagampanan ang kanilang tabaho na kumatawan po sa sektor. Uh, number 10, we really have to uh, push for greater participation by women and young people in agriculture and fisheries. Number 11, we have to implement and uh, complete agrarian reform together with support services, both in private agricultural lands and in public lands. And lastly, it's, it's important that we enact soon a national land and water use law. And in, in the meantime, or at the same time, mobilize po natin lahat ng ahensya ng gobyerno at saka ating pong mga uh, mamamayan, mga citizens na magtulungan po sa magkaroon tayo ng massive reforestation drive, uh, water conservation measures, uh, protect our biodiversity, and so on and so forth. And uh, kuritado rin po rito ang, uh, ang importansya po na ibalik po sana natin ang National Irrigation Administration sa ilalim po ng pangangasiwa ng Department of Agriculture. And then the last slide, uh, Joseph. So these are the groups, these are the logos of the five groups that I mentioned earlier that uh, came out with this position paper 
which I just summarized. Yun lamang po at maraming salamat. Uh, I look forward to having a uh, uh, open and open uh, forum video. Salamat po. Maraming maraming salamat po. Uh, uh, ba bago po tayo magtuloy sa Q&A, uh, hinihingi po namin sa ating mga kasama dito na mag-isip muna kung anong gusto nyong itanong sapagkat marami sa mga tanong nyo ay maaaring manggaling from a national point of view. Ang iba ay sa policy ang manggagaling. Yung iba naman ay meron ng suddenly tumama sa kanila. Kaya namin yan dito sa aming probinsya o kaya namin yan doon sa aming grupo. So iba-iba po ang panggagalingan ng ating mga tanong so baka po po pwedeng i-formulate nyo muna yan. Pero bago po tayo magtanungan, uh, ito pong uh, pinag-usapan natin, yung ipinresent po ni Calioni, ay ipinadala po natin ipinadala po natin sa Office of the Vice President because this is actually an agriculture ag agenda. At hiningi po namin kung ano kaya ang magiging tugon naman ng ating gobyerno ngayon sa panahong ito dito sa uh, agendang ito. So at this point, I just would like to share with you a message coming from the Office of the Vice President na pinag-aralan itong pinaset sa atin ngayon at ano ang tugon nila dito sa agriculture agenda. Sandali lang po. Malapit sa puso ko ang diskusyon natin ngayong araw. Personal kong nakita ang hirap ng mga magsasaka at IP noong nagtatrabaho ako bilang alternative lawyer under an NGO called Saligan. Bago pa man pumasok sa politika, this was my work for 10 years. Pinupuntahan namin yung malalayo at mahihirap na mga komunidad na mga mangingisda, magsasaka at indigenous people sa Bicol. At doon, tinuturuan namin sila ng mga karapatan nila sa ilalim ng batas. Mahirap at demanding ang trabaho, pero sulit ang pagod dahil nabuksan nito ang isip ko sa mga pangangailangan nila. Yung paghahanap nila ng kakampi para maipaglaban ang lupa na dapat ay kanila. Yung kakulangan ng representasyon sa pamahalaan where important decisions are made, pati yung araw-araw na hira para hindi magutom ang pamilya nila. Hanggang ngayon sa Office of the Vice President, baon ko ang mga aral at kwento nila. Kabilang ang agrarian reform at rural development sa mga patuloy nating pinalalakas sa mga partner communities natin. Sa Naga, halimbawa, inilaunch natin ang umasenso sa kabuhayan. Inorganize natin yung mga maliliit na magsasaka ng Kamarinesur at tinulungan sila kung paanong mas mapalago ang kanilang negosyo. Sa Sumilo, Bukidnon, dinala natin ang Pilipina Shell Foundation para ituro sa mga magsasaka doon ang bagong practices sa pagsasaka tulad ng integrated farming at biosystems farming para mas mag-expand ang variety ng crops at dumoble ang kita nila. Madalas din tayong bumisita sa mga coastal at fishing communities kung saan nagbaba tayo ng livelihood assistance tulad ng mga bagong bangka at gamit sa pangingisda na magagamit ng mga residenteng nakasalalay dito ang hanap buhay. Nakita ko yung epekto ng ganito mga programa. Kapag nag-reach out ka sa isang sektor at nag-transfer ng kaalaman, isang buong komunidad ang makikinabang. Pagpapasapasahan nila ang dunong at napakalayo talaga na mararating nito para mapaginhawang buhay ng mga tao sa komunidad. Malinaw. This cannot be done by a single person or organization. Kailangan all hands on deck, magkakapit-bising, hatak ang bawat isa paangat. The way forward will require more of us moving together towards a singular direction, one sure step at a time. Find strength in numbers, collaborate and create vast networks of sectors and organizations committed to empowering each other. 
patuloy na pagtibayan ng samahang nabuo ninyo and open up more spaces like today so that others may join your cause. Nasa likod ninyo ako at ang buong OVP kasama ng mas marami pang mga kababayan natin na nakatuon sa pag-abot ng pinapangarap nating better normal. Isang lipunang mas bukas at mas makatao kung saan lahat nasisilungan, lahat natutulungan, lahat inaaruga. Maraming salamat at mabuhay kayong lahat. Napakaganda po ng mensaheng uh, naging tugo ng ating pangalawang Pangulo ay nakatuon sa ating mga laiko na sinasabi ay pagpatuloy natin yung pag-open ng space para maintindihan natin yung kalagayan ng ating mga kapatid na mga magsasaka, mga magagawang bukid. Kasi tayo walang kamalay-malay, hindi natin alam kung ano yung kanilang dinadaanan at yung laiko ay para bang puro spiritual lang yung pinag-uusapan. Ngayon po, binubuksan natin yung pinto at sinasabi yung laiko ay hindi lang para magdasal at magkakwentuhan tayo sa prayer meeting kung hindi makatugon doon sa mga tunay na mga pangangailangan ng iba pang mga laiko dahil laiko rin po sila. So, yun po ang napakaganda at sinabi nga, mag-reach out ka. Mag-reach out ka. So, kung ikaw ay isang organisasyon o isang grupo sa, sa inyong diocese na may paraan para mag-reach out, the, 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 the impact of that is so big and the call is really for us to have all hands on deck okay so yun po ako ya ako natutuwa at may nakaka naiintindihan pala nila doon sa gobyerno no tayo hindi pa natin masyadong naiintindihan ngunit ngayon nagbubukas ang ating mga mata so ngayon po ay uh, bubuksan ko po ang uh, ang uh, floor natin para sa mga ilang katanungan pwede po kayong magtaas ng kamay at uh, titingnan ko po ang inyong mga ang uh, titinan ko po ang ating monitor kung may nagtataas ng kamay meron din naman po na uh, reaction sa baba pwede rin yung pindutin yung reaction okay at uh, gusto naming marinig mismo ang inyong mga boses kung meron kayong mga katanungan simulan po natin kay Mr. Ed uh, Layog sige po sir paki-unmute na lang po at uh, Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Cruz. Yeah, I fully agree with all of the uh, statements of uh, former Secretary Leone Mutumayor. But always the problem, as pointed out by Ernie Ordonez, is uh, when it comes to budget preparation, uh, they do not allow private sector to fight for the budget. Kaya, for example, in credit, eh, ang, ang budget ng credit sa mga malita farmer is only 2 billion. Eh, dapat nun minimum mga 10 billion. Eh, ang pautang natin sa land bank is wala pang umabot ng 800 billion. Eh, yun ang minimum natin, at least 1 billion. Uh, but the thing is, <clears throat> walang, kwan eh, walang uh, somebody in the budget does not seem to understand what agriculture needs. Kaya, hindi natin maabot yung 4% of uh, GDP for agriculture, nandun tayo sa 2%. Ano? Uh, ang credit, ang laki na kailangan, ang insurance, we, we need a minimum of 10 billion. Uh, recently, uh, Secretary Sani Dominguez complained na masyadong uh, kuha na tayo, nag-exceed na tayo sa insurance. Ay, but we need with all of these calamities, ano? kailangan tayo ng insurance. And then, uh, at least the Vice President addresses increased productivity. Eh, wala tayong kuha na eh. There's no extension. Uh, the LGUs, they always say that LGUs should do the extent, but they don't. Very few of them do, no? So, kailangan talaga natin ito, ang extension like what uh, Vice President Len is doing. Uh, uh, so, I don't know how this is going to be done. We have to have uh, people involved in extension, no? To, uh, uh, for example, dito sa Region 10, ang FICO, they do their own, uh, they purchase uh, palay from the farmers, And they sell it direct to the members, no? So, dapat i-shortcut natin ang, ano, ang process from the farmer to the table. Uh, <clears throat> but this can only be done with uh, more extension, ano? And, uh, of course, uh, the budget of rice is also big, but the other uh, crops, the one that will give the real uh, high income, is very small, no? 
And until today, cocoa fed, the money from the coconut, uh, from cocoa fed, has still not been uh, utilized properly. Eh, mamaya, gagamitin ito sa election, ano? Uh, so, this has, these are all, these have to be husbanded properly. So, yun lang po. Thank you very much. Yeah, if I can respond that, John. Sige po. Uh, sasagot po si uh, Kalyoni, pero before uh, he answers, gusto ko rin po i-acknowledge lang yung uh, presence ni uh, uh, Sir Ernie Ordonez ng uh, uh, Alianza Agricultura na malamang mamaya rin po ay may sasabihin din. Uh, Kalyoni, please. Thank you yes, po. Uh, first of all, before responding to the uh, points raised by Ed, uh, I just want to express my appreciation to Vice President Lenny in her recorded statement because I noticed she... Uh, she, what she said matches at least four or five of the major recommendations I made earlier, remember? Binanggit uh, yung agrarian reform and rural development, uh, the need for proper representation by farmers and fisher folk in government, uh, the need to, you know, support for the fishery sector and the uh, use of technology. So at least four, tumama dun sa aming sinasabi. Of course, it needs more elaboration at when it comes to having a concrete program of government. In the case of the points raised by Ed, Ed, napakarami yon. But uh, quickly, uh, in, in, uh, in, in our one, paper, we did mention that we should consider creating a subsidiary of the land bank that will focus on uh, one, uh, re, uh, subsidized lending to uh, small farmers and fisher folk, just like what they do in Thailand. Okay. So talagang maliit, kulang na kulang yung pautang na binibigay po ng gobyerno sa ating maliliit na producers. That's why we have to intensify uh, efforts in this regard. Uh, crop insurance, rather than diminishing it as being proposed by Secretary Dominguez, dapat pa nga palakasin dyan eh. Kasi without crop insurance, pag tinamaan ng climate change ng mga farmers natin, hindi na sila makabangon. Kung hindi sila makabangon, saan tayo kukuha ng ating pagkain? Or importasyon na naman? <laughs> Uh, extension, very critical. So we really have to, as I said earlier, capacitate our LGUs to provide more extension, more marketing assistance, and so on and so forth. And I'm glad that FICO is already into even matching one, our farmers with the consumers. Because we need to have, I mentioned this in my earlier presentation, we need to have alternative marketing systems so that ang consumers will have more ways to access the, the products from the farmers. Kung pwede nga, minimum number of intermediaries para ma, kwan, makatipid po in terms of prices po ang ating consuming public. Uh, and then, Coco Levy po, uh, there is already a law, pero ang tagal po, bago po, wala pang, wala pang approved roadmap, wala pang uh, kwan, industry development plan, Hindi, hindi pa po na-appoint yung mga farm representatives sa PCA board. Eh, magsasam na buwan na po eh since the new law took effect last March. So I, I share in your one, impatience, Ed, in, in accessing the coconut levy funds. Salamat po. Salamat po. Tawagin ko naman po si Ma'am Gigi. Nakataas po ang kamay niya. And after Ma'am Gigi, si Bisha Pabilio. Magandang hapon po. Simple lang po ang tanong ko sa isang galing sa isang hindi masyadong nakakaintindi. Isa po sa ang mga bagabag sa akin matagal na ay kung bakit nabubulok ang ating mga bigas sa NFA storage. Sa akin, parang ang, at saka ang intindi ko noon, binibili ang palay sa mga, sa mga magsasaka para makatulong sa kanila at tapos i- what do you call this? Ini-impact yun, pero pagkatapos, pagbibili, pagkailangan. Ngayon, tapos, isa pang, okay, that one, no? Ay, ay, hindi ko alam kung nakapaloob na yun sa mga planong binigay nyo. Well, kung nakapaloob na, it's okay. It's, I'm just expressing my, what do you call this? My feelings regarding, rather, whenever I see the fact that rice price goes up, we have no rice, and then rice is rotting in the NFA storages. Now, the second one is probably, I don't know how much we can do about it, but it's the land conversion area, land conversion from uh, agricultural to subdivisions, etc. whether 
it would help in any way or whether we there is something we can say about that. Opo. Salamat po. Uh, tungkol po sa kwan na uh, NFA, under the existing law po yung rice tariffication law, ang role po ng NFA ngayon ay napaka-limited na. It's limited to maintaining what is called a buffer stock. Okay, so kailangan po nakareserba po yung bigas na yan so that in case may kalamidad, meron pong pagkukunan ng gobyerno para ibigay po na as relief assistance. Now, as to when on the problem of deteriorating or nabubulok na bigas, nasa kwan po yan, sistema po ng kwan, inventory management ng NFA. I, I suppose they, have, they should have a way na after so many months na mag- the quality of the rice tax will de- deteriorate. So dapat, NFA should, should have a system, which I think they, they have, of disposing of these old stocks at papalitan nila ng mga bagong stocks by way of procuring uh, palay and then uh, milling them into rice and storing them in their bodega. So nasa kwan po yan, I think proper inventory kwan, management. Uh, at saka yung tanong naman po niyo about land conversions, uh, we have to address the problem of land conversions on at least two levels by way of policy. Kaya nga po, pinupush po namin yung early enactment ng National Land and Water Use Law para mag- magkaroon po tayo ng maliwanag na sistema of apportioning the land according to its uh, best uses. Certainly, kapag ito po may patubig tapos nasa kapatagan, dapat mapiserve po natin yan for agriculture, especially for rice cultivation. Kasi kung sige po convert tayo into one, subdivisions, eh, baka po, ma, kwan po malalagay sa alanganin po yung ating kasiguruduhan po sa pagkain. Then number two, uh, a lot of farmers are really tempted to sell their lands or their uh, rights kasi talagang hindi sila kumikita sa kanilang pagsasaka. Eh. That's why we really have to come up with uh, all of these interventions I mentioned earlier, mga farm-to-market roads, di ba? Uh, binigit ni Ed yung proper kwan, credit assistance, marketing assistance, and so on, so that farming becomes a viable or a profitable profession. Otherwise, kung lugi ka ng lugi, angkat ng angkat, eh talagang matutokso po yung ating magsasaka na ibenta na lang po yung kwan, yung, yung kanyang uh, kwan, lupa, eh, malay pa niya, baka maging milyonaryo pa, pa siya sa pagbenta po ng isang uh, hektari ng, ng sakahan niya. Uh, of course, baka hindi po magtagal yung pera na yun. But as I said, we need to have a clear policy on proper allocation of one, uh, land use. Saka number two, a host of government support and, and uh, assistance must be there to make uh, farming uh, profitable and viable. And at the same time, ensure greater food security for all of us. Thank you. Maraming salamat po. Very quickly lang po. Dahil tinatanong mo, bakit daw nabubulok yung ating mga, mga nakastak ng mga bigas Ako po ay eh, dating rice miller. Ako, oh, ako, okay. ako dating rice miller at uh, ang pagpuumani ng palay ang isang magsasaka, dalawa lang naman ang choice niya eh. Ibenta sa trader sa murang halaga kasi sa pilapil pa lang kinukuha na or baka pwedeng ibenta sa NFA na mas mataas ng konti ang presyo. Ang problema po pag ibinenta sa NFA, napakarami requisitos. Kailangan may, may papil ka, kailangan eh, mataas ang moisture content ng iyong palay na hindi mo naman pwedeng pataasin dahil hindi mo naman maibilad, wala kang bilaran. Kaya mapipilitan silang ibenta sa NFA, ngunit sariwa yung palay. At kapag sariwa ang palay, hindi eh, na sa bodega. Sa bodega pa lang, nabubulok na. Okay? So, pipilitin ngayong gilingin yung mga palay na yon na sariwa. Kaya, kaya kapag iyong giniling mo ng sariwa at dinala mo sa bodega ng NFA, sandali lang mabubulok na. So, yun po yung mga mechanics ng... Uh, na kung bakit nabubulok, yun po mga inani natin na sayang na sayang naman na pinaghirapan ng mga ating magsasaka, eh, nabubulok na lang po ng ganon. Ang, kaya po, mahalaga po yung tanong na yun, bakit nabubulok? Okay? Kasi kailangan, kailangan po ng tulong ng gobyerno para po mabili sa, sa tamang halaga, mabigyan ng paraan matuyo ang palay, at mabigyan din ng pagkakataon upang yung sabi nga yung inventory control at saka yung distribution ay maging tama. Kaya sa darating na halalan, 
Huwag <laughs> niyong kalilimutan. Opo, tumatawa na po si Bishop Abilio. Tumatawagin ko na po si Bishop Abilio ngayon. Ako naman, uh, ako naman, isishare ko, hindi gaano sa national. no Kasi nung pumunta ako dito sa Palawan, nakita ko yung situation dito sa lugar. Una po, ang daming lupa. Lupang bakante kasi hindi natitil. No, siguro walang kapital, siguro walang know-how, pero ang daming lupa. Isa rin na papansin ko, ang daming lupa na magaganda sa tabi ng beach, magaganda ang mga may-ari, taga Maynila na. <laughs> no, nabili na kasi walang land use. Uh, yeah. No, at marami diyan ay timberland pa. Yeah, no, right, na, na right. nahawak na ng mga ng mga taga Maynila, no? Mm. Kaya yung mga tao nandito at hindi na napapakinabangan. At ang isa rin pong nakikita ko ay yung sinasabi na infrastructure. Ang sama-sama ng daan. No, kami nga, ako yung nakakapot na naka-four-wheeler na nasasakyan. Talagang uh, bugbog pa ang katawan ko. Ano pa kaya yung mga farmers no, na walang sasakyan? Um, di motor lang o kaya karosa lang sasakyan. Talaga ang hirap. Ang hirap ng daan, walang infrastructure. No, kaya yung mga produkto hindi mailabas. No? Tapos, isa rin ay infrastructure din sa, sa, sa kuryente. Palawan, nandito nang galing walang paya. Wala kami kuryente. Maraming lugar, eh, wala pang kuryente. No? At dito sa amin sa Taytay, uh, hindi stable ang kuryente. No? So, yan. Yeah. So, how will they, kahit na anong ibigay mo ng mga infrastructure dyan, mga makinarya, ay kung walang kuryente, paano sila? Tapos, lalong-lalo na walang infrastructure sa information, information infrastructure. Hindi naaabot ng mga cell sites, walang mga signal. So, hindi sila makikinabang no? sa ganitong mga pamamaraan ng transaksyon na sana kung mayroon, ay mas magkukuha sila. So, yan po yung isang kalagayan. Dito po sa amin sa Bicariato, na datnang ko, uh, thanks to Bishop Juanitz, mayroon po kami mga lupa no, na hindi rin namin na, na, napapakinabangan pa. Pero dito mismo sa Taytay, may, may, may 9 hectare land kami no, na I want to develop. Pero kaya sinisimulan namin na maging integrated farm no, dito sa loob mismo. Pero nakita ko, ang lak- kailangan nun na malaking kapital <laughs> to do that. No, may, may know-how na kami, pero yung kapital, yung labor ng mga tao, yung gagawa. Ngayon, may ginagawa kaming uh, patuhan, itikan, no, uh, para, para sa, sa rabbit uh, culture, no, ganun din sa fish pan culture, sa uh, na free-range chicken. Pero you have to put up the infrastructure. No, at malaking kapital ang kailangan dyan. So, We just made my small experience. Ay, kaya nga nakikita ko, lalong-lalo na siguro yung mga tao sa mga barangay na may lupa sila, wala silang pera. So, kung ano-ano lang kami tatanim nila. No, magtanim lang ng nyog. You have to wait for 10 years bago umuha yan. No, na mga saging, mga 2 years. Pero iyan lang. Ma- marami pa sana pwede ma-develop. Pero wala nga silang kapital. At maybe, maybe many of them also, walang know-how. No, paano gawin yun? Talagang malaki ang problema. Pero sana mayroon tayong resources. I, I think other provinces would have the same uh, situation na may, may, may mga lupa na nakatiwangwang na hindi na ma-maximize. Yan lang po yung aking kananaman. <laughs> Salamat po, Bishop. Uh, bago po sumagot si Kalyoni ulit, sasabihin ko lang na kailan po kami pwedeng dumalaw ng Kalyoni dyan para <laughs> naman na maka- <laughs> mapag-isip pa natin paano ba natin gagamitin yan, yung mga lupa A- anytime you're welcome ayan po welcome. anytime <laughs> Kalyoni meron po kayo yeah. ma- A- ako yung nasisiyan sa uh, sinabi ni Bishop kasi it, it puts in very real terms yung sitwasyon yung problema po ng agriculture and this is what we want to address by way of well at the national level siyempre Bishop we have to come up with uh, very specific policies that will include proper budgets. Kasi po, yung infrastructure, roads, uh, internet, etc. It needs government kung talaga eh. Government intervention by way of proper funding. And, but ultimately, it, will, it should flow down to the kwant, down to the barangay level. At dapat pagtulungan po rin to ng kwant, local governments. So, the policies have to be there even on the issue of kwant idle lands. 
uh, that, doon sa alala kong bill ko dati on the National Land Use Law way back in the 1990s, mayroong portion doon on idle land tax eh. Dapat talaga pagka hindi ginagamit yung lupa, dapat patawan ng malaking buwis ng gobyerno because it's not serving uh, the, the, the needs of society to keep land sa uh, idle just for speculative purposes. So thank you, Bishop, for those uh, fun, very concrete examples of the problems in the rural area. Uh, uh, Brother June, aalis mo na ako kasi inorganize ko pa dito yung sanggo na yung laiko dito sa amin sa Vigariato. Ay, <laughs> sige po. Dito yung DCL namin. Yung Nadalawin ko po kayo dyan para i-organize oh, natin yung sanggo na yung laiko. <laughs> sige, you're welcome. Salamat, you're welcome. maraming maraming you're salamat po, po uh, Bishop Pabilio. My, my time here is uh, 2.58. Opo, napakayaman po ng ating usapan. And uh, we, we hope that we can have a little more time with uh, Kalyoni. Meron na po ako unang, uh, dalawang tanong. Una, kayo po ba i-nominate ngayon sa kahit anong party list? Meron po ba kayong uh, uh, final? Uh, hindi pa. Hindi. John, I'm not running for any position. Ang ABA po, meron po ba? Uh, tatakbo uh, po ba? Ang... Hindi, hindi na rin. Hindi na rin kami. Kasi kung ano, uh, we have to join the party list again, we have to re-register. Opo, opo. And we have not done so. Opo. Sayang naman. Yeah. <laughs> Ngunit pangalawang tanong ko po, bag, kung, may, kung wala nang ibang may katanungan, mayroon po kayong ipinaglalaban ngayon sa Senado, ihinihingi sa Senado tungkol dito sa RCEP. Mayroon po ba kayong gustong, uh, ang sanggol ng lahi ko po ay nagpa, magpalabas na rin ng statement in support of your appeal to the Senate. Mayroon po ba kayong gustong ipahayag lang tungkol po dito sa uh, pagkilos na ito? Opo, kami po ay kwan, uh, lubang tumututol dito sa tinatawag na Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership uh, Free Trade Agreement that will uh, bring together the ASEAN countries, including the Philippines, at yung pong limang mga malalaking bansa na katabi po natin. Principally po, ito po yung China, Japan, South Korea, Australia, at saka New Zealand. This uh, free trade zone, uh, to, in my opinion, is even worse than the certain features of the World Trade Organization. But before that, uh, John, uh, part of the reason why we are objecting is wala pong konsultasyon na ginawa eh, the last two years, especially by the Department of Agriculture. So we knew nothing about this uh, the late, the one, final version of the RCEP until the Senate under Senator Coco Pimentel started the hearings uh, leading possibly to uh, the Senate's concurrence in uh, the ratification of the RCEP. So, ngayon lang po namin alam. Eh, nung pinag-aralan po namin ng mas malalalim ito, one po, delikado po ang aming sektor. Uh, just to cite an example, uh, when there is too much importation of a certain product coming in, under the rules of the World Trade Organization, the government can impose additional tariff or additional customs duty. Uh, this is called a safeguard tariff. The idea is, dagdagan po yung one, existing tariff para kung, masyad, kung malak, malaki na po yung taripa, eh, madidiscourage po ang importers from bringing in more imported product kasi mahal na masyado sa kanila. Eh. Unfortunately, in this uh, RCEP agreement, napakalit na po yung pwedeng gawin ng gobyerno in terms of providing additional tariff protection. Uh, so it, it, will not, it, it will probably make it very difficult to gain additional uh, protection. In the meantime, sige pong papasok ang napakaraming imported na produkto, let's say rice or pork, na ang resulta po niyan talagang bagsak po yung presyo ng local uh, product natin, mamamatay po yung ating mga magsasaka. So, it's worse than the WTO rules because in the WTO, there is no limit to the amount of tariff you can impose to protect your local industry from over-importation. Dito sa RCEP, napakakitid po ang uh, pwedeng ibigay po ng gobyerno sa ati, para proteksyonan po yung ating mga magsasaka. That's why, kwan eh, it's very, very dangerous this uh, RCEP agreement and that to us that is enough reason to oppose it. And uh, salamat po sa Kwan, Laiko, 
for uh, supporting the position taken by uh, right now we are about 30 organizations including uh, from labor that uh, are together in opposing the you know, the RCEP agreement thank you john apo maybe magdagdag john sige po tuloy po apo maybe magdagdag mr john Don't yes sir, sir ernie sir ernie thank you po tuloy po tandaling sa dito lang tatlong bagay lang no Ano ba kinalaman natin dito sa mga magsasaka? Mga iba doon, hindi nila alam bakit na, na bubulok yung palay. Hindi nila alam ano yung trade agreement. Importante lang tatlong bagay. Unang-una, ano magagawa natin? Pinaka-importante magboto ng tama. Yan ang pinaka-importante. Pagka nagkaguluhan ng ating bansa ay dahil sa gobyerno. Maling hinahalal. Okay, sa tatlong bagay. Unang-una, sino halal niya? Unang-una, halal niyo yung mga may programa sa agricultura. Mga iba walang programa. Ikalawa, Pero importante ito kasi nakita ko ito. No? Bigyan nyo ng boto yung mga taong naniniwala sa taong bayan. Kasi nangyari dito, yung sinabi nga ni Calione, no? may important trade agreement, yung rice tarification, <laughs> hirap na hirap farmers natin. Wala namang trade measures at iba pa. So, importante po dito, tanungin nyo kung naniniwala sila na dapat bigyan yung private sector karapatan makabagsuggest kasi tinanggal nila isang budget na tinignan may budget po lang kurang kung tinanggal nila yan, kaya alam po ninyo ngayon, 22 billion, ulitin natin, 22 billion, hindi ma-liquidate. E kung nandun kami, eh hindi mangyari yun, kasi tinanggal kami, wala nang magbabantay. Ikalawa, eto mga sinabi ni Leon, eh, yung mga rice tariff, yung mga import, 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 import. Dati may committee ko, tinanggal na rin yun. Kaya <laughs> lalo yung presidente uh, na magbibigay ng karapatan sa private store. Ito katlo. Alam mo, lahat sila nagsasabi, eh, madali yung magsalita. Tingnan nyo ang ugali ng mga kandidato. Eh, ugali. Kasi pwede magsabi, oo, oh, oh, tapos hindi gagawin. Ganun nangyari sa amin, no? Oo, oh, ito walang ginawa, no? Ugali po ni ugali. Tingnan yung ugali. So, pero importante ngayon, siyempre pwede tayo mag-usap tungkol sa nabubulok ang palay. Wala ka naman power, eh. Ang may power dyan yung government. Kung mali yung government, patay ka rin. Wala, wala siyang pa- pakilangan ng sinasabi mo. O, well, may malakas kaya. Intindihan nyo, pinaka-importante yung gagawin nyo ngayon, mag-aral, pero mas importante, halal nyo yung una, yung may paniwala na kailangan tulang magsaka, ikalawa, nagbibigay ng, ng karapatan sa mga private sector, mag-suggest, ngayon, tinanggal, ng karapatan naman, tinanggal kami, sila na lang, kaya nagwawala sila. At ikatlo, ano ang gali ng kandidato? Tingnan mo, buhay nila. Tingnan mo, buhay nila. Kasi marami, mandali magsalita, pero ang buhay nila magsasabi kung sila ay sinsero o hindi. Di ba? Buhay nila, tingnan nyo. Kaya alam po niyo kami ni Leonie, kami neutral, no? Kasi meron kaming ginagawang um, forum para sa presidential bills namin. Hindi pwede mag, mag-side kami ngayon kasi kami ag- nag-suggest. Pero sabi lang namin, alam po niyo may importante ang nakasunod na anim na taon. Bagsak na tayo ngayon. Masarap babagsak na kung mali halal nyo. Kaya ang paghalal nyo, unang-una, mag-vote kayo. Pero importante, Tignan rin po ninyo, hindi lamang yung pangako, hindi yung ugali ng tao sa nakaraan ng sampung taon. Ano ba ginawa namin? Puso pa sila. Hindi. Yan ang tinignan nyo. Yan lang po. Salamat. Maraming maraming salamat po. Uh, ka Ernie, nakikika na rin ako ngayon. Eh. <laughs> Pero totoo po, na, bagamat hindi tayo hayagang nagsasalita kung sino, eh talagang dapat malaman natin ano naman ang mga pag-uugali at ano naman ang mga paniniwala at ano naman ang mga programa na maaaring maging uh, basihan natin sa ating pagpili na sa mga susunod pang uh, mga uh, kandidato para sa ating bayan. Ay, sa huli lang, pinaka-importante po sa lahat sinabi mo, programa, salita at uh, ugali. Pinaka-importante yung ugali. Ugali. Okay. Kasi marami, mar- mandaling mabola. Pero hindi mo mabigyan ng bola yung nakaranas sa mundo. Ano ginawa lang sa, sa ating mga kamamayan? Yan importante. Thank you. Ugali, ugali, ugali. Salamat po. Salamat po. Para tayo nagre-retreat, no? Para <laughs> talaga yung pinaka-importante ay lumalabas, yung buo, yung buod ay lumalabas. At dito po gusto nating magpasalamat uh, muli kay uh, Kalyoni at sa lahat ng mga tumulong sa atin ngayon sa uh, usapang ito. Hindi pa po tayo tapos, my time is uh, 3:07. Ang susunod po natin ay yung isang usapan naman na ginawa natin kasama naman si Attorney Rodel Rodis. So uh, ipapalabas po natin yung discussion natin kay Attorney Rodis uh, sapagkat ito po ay may ka, uh, tungkulan naman uh, sa securing the energy 
and actually even the patrimony of our nation. So I hope uh, you will stay with us. We're uh, showing the video in a few in a few moments. Maraming salamat po ulit, Kalyoni. Kasama rin po natin ang presidente ng Council of the Lady of the Philippines na siya naman din pumirma at nagpalabas ng statement of support dito sa graph case na ito sapagkat alam nating napakahalaga itong isyong ito na ngayon ay uh, pag uh, dinilayan pa natin, pakikinggan natin ang mga kasagutan, mga nas nasa loobin ng ating uh, uh, guest speaker ngayon. Magandang umaga po, Attorney Rodel. Magandang umaga po sa inyo. Magandang gabi naman sa inyo dyan. <laughs> <laughs> Salamat sa pagpapaunlak ng ating discussion ngayon. Ang una po eh, talagang uh, masyado nakatawag ng pansin itong uh, binitawan yung salita na the most incredible crony agreement in history. Ano po talaga? Nung pinakikinggan ko, sabi ko, aba napakabait naman ni Tony uh, uh, Rodel. Napakagaan naman nung ginamit niyang salita. Incredible. Parang ganun. Eh kapag pinakikinggan po namin yung inyong passion pag nagkukwento, parang sa Tagalog, ang ibig sabihin nyo, ito'y kahindik-hindik, <laughs> kagilagilalas, karimarimarim. Pwede po bang ano, ipaliwanag nyo, ano ang tunay yung ibig sabihin dito sa most incredible crony agreement in history? Well, you know, incredible means hindi makapaniwala. You know, and when you hear about it, yun ang unang reaction. Paano ito nangyari? Ba ba bakit ito nangyari? At, uh, bakit pinabayaang mangyari itong ano? So that was the incredible part that, you know, literally, it boggles the mind kung iisipin mo yung, yung nangyari. At paano ito nangyari? How did uh, the people allow this to happen? And uh, so that was what the incredible part is. But you... You're right. You could have said the most uh, lopsided, the most uh, unfair, the most, uh, uh, you know, lahat na ng most. And it would not even be an exaggeration. Sometimes people would say that and they're exaggerating. It would be hyperbole. Pero hindi. Dito talagang uh, it's accurate that it was incredible. Kaya ako sinabi yun. And why would someone like you file this complaint? Ang uh, balita nga po nga ay, kay, kay ngayon po ay nasa San Francisco ko ngayon, but why take the effort? Well, first of all, a little background. No? Um, I am the president of the uh, U.S. Pinoy's for Good Governance. We were formed in 2010. And in 2011, our group, which has Lloyda Nicholas Lewis as our national chair, we were focused on what China was doing in the West Philippine Sea. So if people were to Google my uh, articles, which appeared in the Inquirer, uh, um, I have over 25 articles from 2011 to 2018 on China. My first article was called Stand Up to the China Bully. And in the articles we were describing, my articles, we were describing what China was doing um, uh, in the islands and how they were encroaching and they were invading um, the, uh, the, West, uh, the West Philippine Sea. And in those early years, we would meet with uh, Secretary of Foreign Affairs, um, Albert Del Rosario in San Francisco when he would visit. 
And we were talking about bringing the case up to the uh, United Nations, to the International Tribunal on the Law of the Sea. So um, our concern about filing actions and taking uh, all of these issues goes way back. This is not something new that we just, uh, we just did because we have a track record. We have a long history of involvement. Uh, a lot of the initial rallies against China, global rallies, we had it were um, in 2011, 2012, during those first years. Every Chinese consulate in the US, we had Filipinos marching in protest against what they were doing in the Philippines. So um, that concern has been there from, from the very beginning for us. And so when we heard about this issue and, um, and we saw um, China getting into this through Dennis Hui, that greatly alarmed us. And, uh, and we were uh, we were frankly hoping that there would be groups in the Philippines that would file, because we were sensitive to the possible attack that uh, bakit nakikialam ang mga Pilipino na nasa Amerika bakit hindi doon. But uh, what we realized when we started talking to groups and individuals is that uh, marami talagang takot dahil sa ginawa ng Duterte government kay Maria Reza na miski walang kinalaman si Maria sa article na final ng cyber libel. Pinatato lang ano, <laughs> guilty siya at sinintensya to six years and it's still on appeal. No? So... Um, that was incredible, but it had the desired effect of having a chilling effect on people so that natakot ang mga tao. Baka mangyari sa, sa kanila. The fortunate thing for Maria Reza is that she's a dual citizen. So, hindi siya natatakot dahil doon. So, inisip din namin. So, yun ang ano, kung, kung tatakot initially na mag-file at kailangan tumma-file ka agad because masyadong uh, masama ang mangyayari sa, sa nangyaring ito, then doon kami napilitan, we better file now. Uh, especially after yung tatlong Senate hearings ng uh, Senate Committee on Energy headed by Senator Sherwin Gatchalian. Yung mga lumabas doon sa tatlong um, hearings na yon yung mga dokumento, mga testimonya ni um, ni uh, Kusi, ni Secretary Al Kusi, yun ang nag ano, sa amin na, na kailangan ngayon, hindi tayo pwedeng maghintay until next year or uh, kung ano na, uh, kailangan masabi ka agad, mahinto itong nangyayari ngayon. Napakalalim pala po sa kamalayo ng pinanggalingan nito na natutuwa kami na may mga Pilipino na nakakakita nitong mga katotohanan to na ma- noon pa, noon pa, na marami naman sa amin dating mga Pilipino eh para bang na, nagug ha ano yan bakit anong issue kaya po siguro ito yung gusto nating iparating na na mensahe doon sa mga nakikinig sa atin ngayon uh, attorney ito pong session natin ay naririnig ng mga mga presidente <clears throat> at mga leaders ng mga nationally organizations ng ng Catholic bishops uh, uh, Conference of the Philippines at saka ng mga Diocese and Council of the Philippines. At ang gusto natin iparating na, na tanong eh, why would an ordinary person be interested? Bakit kayo mga mga kasamahan natin, bakit kayo mga nasa parokya, kayo mga na Diocese, bakit kailangan mag interested dito sa isyong ito? Okay, so, uh, you know, yung nung isang araw, na no do do uh, BBC uh, TV at pinalabas doon yung nangyayari sa Moldavia na uh, wala silang oil at naghihirap ang mga tao doon uh, uh, kung may mga gas station na nabalita nila na may oil miles long ang mga kotse nandoon at nai-stop dahil nawawala rin ng oil sa paghihintay at yung industriya nila bagsak dahil sa walang oil. Walang oil dahil ang oil nila galing sa Rusya. At hininto ng Rusya dahil interesadong Moldavia na sumali sa EU, sa European Union. 
So, pinuwersa ng Russia kung ganyan, hihintoy namin ng oil, mahir magpahirap kayo. So, nakikita natin sa nangyayari sa Moldavia, maaring ano, at hindi lang maaari, definitely mangyayari ito sa Pilipinas kung ang China o mga taong close sa China ang mag-decide na mahinto itong pagbibigay ng oil na nasa Malampaya gas field. When we realize Malampaya gas field provides 40% of the energy needs of Luzon and 20% nationally, pa napakalaking bagay yan kung alisin mo yung 40% at hindi na-cover ng Saudi Arabia or others, which is likely dahil tumataas ng tumataas ang presyo ng ng oil, anong mangyayari sa ekonomiya ng Pilipinas? Magkakaroon ng babagsak at magkakandahirap. Mag, mag, uh, yung mga businesses will close, mga employees will be laid off, mga rapid blackout sa gabi, hindi kayo maka-turn on ng refrigerator, ng gas range or electric range. Maghihirap ang Pilipinas. Yung pagdudusan ng mangyayari sa Pilipinas Nakikita na natin ngayon sa nangyayari sa Moldavia. No? So, kailangan gawin natin ang paraan ngayon na hindi yun mangyayari. Hindi tayo pwedeng maghintay kung nangyayari na. And then isipin, paano ito nangyayari? Paano ito pinabayaan natin? Yun ang uh, dahilan kung bakit kailangan natin i-file at ipaalam sa mga tao. And uh, once na alam ng mga tao ang nangyayari ngayon, then people should do something habang may panahon pang gumawa ng ba- magagawa. Atorne, ginagalit mo lang mga ko eh. Nagagalit na ako dyan sa narinig ko. And then, then, ang ibig sabihin lang dyan is that eventually, uh, power will be controlled by China. Na ngayon pa lang naman nakikita natin na in so many ways, we are being bullied by this uh, by, by this country. And siguro po yun yung gusto nating makarating sa mga kapwa nating mga simpleng tao na may pakialam tayo dito na kailangan may, may manindigan tayo dito sa mga isyong ito kahit ano pa ang ikinukwento ng mga tao na above board. Banggitin ko po yung mga lumalabas na balita ngayon at torni kasi naiimbita po si uh, Secretary Kusi sa mga press uh, at sa mga mga news ngayon sinasabi niya na uh, this is a very simple as uh, shares transfer. Parang bumili ka lang ng ng, ng share sa isang uh, sa isang kumpanya. Yung kumpanya pa rin yun ang nagpapatakbo. Chevron pa din, sinasabi niya. Iba lang ang may-ari ng shares at wala daw pakialam ang DOE doon sa pagbentahan ng shares uh, ng mga 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 shares na yon, yung mga shares transfer. So ang ordinaryo sa amin, hagan ah, pala. Ayun. Pero alam namin nung meron kayong nalalaman, ano po ba ito? You know, uh, interesting, no? In June, just a few months ago, nabili ng UC Malampaya, yung company na finorm ni, uh, ni D, ni Dennis Uy, na nakuha nila ang 45% share ng Shell. But when they got the uh, 45% may competition from money uh, panganiba yung sa ano PLDT yung Globe maraming mga kumpanya ang nag uh, nag-submit ng uh, ap- application pero dahil sa connection ni Dennis Uy at because meron na silang track record sa pagkuha nila ng Chevron nakuha nila yung contract na yon no but they had to uh, still compete. Nung kinuha ng uh, Udena, yung company ni, uh, ni Dennis Uy, itong Chevron contract, nakuha nila in April of 2019, nung hindi man lang alam ng Department of Energy na nagne-negotiate ang Chevron sa UC Malampaya, yung isang company na finorm ni uh, Dennis Uy na nag-negotiate na pala sila at nagkaroon na sila ng agreement in April of 2019. Now, number one, there was no competition. Even the comp- the uh, government entity that is supposed to supervise it did not know that they were negotiating. Paano nangyari yun? If you look at the joint operating agreement 
that was established in 2001, the participating parties, Chevron and Shell, which were the, the organization, the companies, corporations that provided the technical know-how, a capability, technological capability to set up the Malampaya gas fields to make it operate so that the oil will flow from those gas fields all the way to the terminal in Batangas and from Batangas to be distributed all over Luzon and parts of Visayas and Mindanao. Now, sin inami ni Kusi sa testimony niya sa Senate uh, Committee on Energy na hindi nila alam. Kung hindi mo alam, paano ka nagbigay ng approval? Hindi, hindi man lang kinuha yung approval. What made it more incredible is that yung sinetap ni Udena, ni Uy, UC Malampaya, that, nego that entity negotiated the contract in April of 2019, but it did not file any papers sa SEC until September of 2019, until five months later. And nalaman natin, ang capitalization itong sinetap nila was $100. How do you get a deal that's worth 158 billion pesos and all you put up is a simple 5,000 peso capitalization? Yung uh, agreement na ginawa nila is even more incredible. Kaya yung incredible part ginamit yun eh. Yung bang hindi makapaniwala, paano nagyari ito? They bought it for 560 million. But that 560 million consist of 375 million dollars in loans to two banks yung ing bank of singapore and the new zealand bank in in uh, australia we do not know who owns those um, those shares in those two banks we suspect it's china but regardless the problem is no papers were submitted there were no um so we don't know but even if they were not china the fact that these two companies, these two banks, control the uh, the all these loans, and if you know, problem, eh? if uh, if Dennis Uy defaults on the loans, then these two banks can come in and take over. So it's no longer under the control of the Philippines. Pero yung 560 million, 370 million came from these two banks. A hundred. 50 million came from what uh, Chevron was entitled to receive from the Philippines. In other words, every year, kasi ang taas ng nakukuha nila, we estimate about 1,200 billion, uh, 1.2 billion. Uh, it's a huge amount, no? Napasama ito sa, sa, sa payment. So in effect, what uh, Chevron received for its shares was only 400 million. You have the 370 from the banks, 150 million Chevron was to receive from the Philippine government, naibigay sa UC Malampaya. And the 30 million dollar difference is in the form of shares of stock that uh, UC Malampaya was to sell. We understand that the hearing na sinabi ng ng DOE, wala pa raw na bebenta. So how did this happen? 370 million in loans from foreign banks. They control UC Malampaya. And then the other issue that concerned us, we know Chevron and Shell, they have professional employees, they have technical people. Um, they've been operating uh, gas plants all over the world. What do we know of UC Malampaya? They have no experience. They were only formed in 2019. Who are the people running those plants? Who are the people supervising them? What qualifications do they have? None of that was submitted to the DOE. We don't know. There are dangers inherent in people who do not know what they're doing running uh, the Malampaya gas plants. Any leak of oil leaks or uh, uh, any explode will result in damage, permanent damage to the Palawan Sea. 
and it could call, create, if there was any problem in the pipelines that go to Batangas, you can imagine what will happen to our fisher, fisher folks. They cannot, uh, they cannot be able to get fish from a very polluted uh, Palawan Sea and all the way through. And so, mahirapan ang mga tao, hindi maka, maka kuha sila ng mga isda dun sa fields na yon. Kawaw ang bayan, you know, and this is the responsibility of the Department of Energy. And the fact that they said um, na wala silang kinalaman, this is just that, you know, that's the one thing that... Uh, that uh, Kusi kept saying again and again is that what we did was legal. First of all, it wasn't legal. It violates all kinds of Philippine laws, which we itemized. But there, this is based on the reality that the Duterte government controls the judiciary. So anything they say is legal, the courts will follow and say is legal. The, uh, they have confidence in the levels of bureaucracy to say it's legal. So he never said it was the right thing to do. It was uh, fiscally responsible. It was, uh, you know, for the good of the country. No, all he kept saying is that it's legal. It's legal. When we know it's not legal, but he's saying it's legal because no court will say it is not, as far as he's concerned. So you know, bakit tayo kung binabanggit si Dennis Uy? Eh, it just so happened na si Dennis Uy eh ang nakabili. Sabi niya, but uh, um, any person for that matter, any entity for that matter, sabi naman nila, could have, could have been the, the buyer of that shares and it would still be regular. Uh, Napakaskerte you know, naman ni Dennis Uy. You know, it, the, the question should have been posed in a, a different, more accurate way. Would someone who was not Dennis Uy have gotten that kind of benefit that kind of incredible uh deal and the answer is simply no because dennis Uy has been a close personal friend of duterte since he was mayor of uh, davao <coughs> he was one of the biggest if not the biggest uh, financial don donor to duterte's campaign and uh you know so they have been close personal friends for all these years when Dennis Uy was interviewed a year ago, and we saw the interview, he said that back in 2013, he was having problems with the Philippine government because they charged him with smuggling oil, I believe from China. And uh, so they were, his company was going to face ruin. And uh, uh, he went to Duterte and Duterte gave him advice, very silly, where he told him, go in front of a mirror and say this, his favorite word to himself a hundred times until you toughen up and you learn how to deal with the Philippine government entities. So Dennis Uy said in that interview, he followed uh, Mayor Duterte's advice and somehow he was able to get rid of uh, the uh the charges of uh oil smuggling that were levied against him so they have a close friendship and it's because of that personal friendship that dennis Uy got all these benefits you know it's interesting when we heard and saw the transcripts of secretary kusi's testimony in front of the senate uh kusi admitted that this was going to be beneficial to the Philippine government, that if the Philippine government through the Department of Energy, um, through the uh, PNOC, the Philippine National Oil Corporation, if the Philippines bought it and took over Chevron share, which the contract with Chevron says that the Philippines will have the right of first refusal, that um, you know, before it can be sold to any foreign entities, has to go to the government first. He said that he realized it would be beneficial because the amount of money that you get, you cannot get that anywhere. All the work had already been done by Chevron and Shell, so now it was just collecting the money. The people who were running it 
they were already all certified by um, by, <coughs> by uh, Shell and uh, Chevron. But he said the reason he changed his mind was because he was getting harassed. He, this is the word he used, you know, he loves using that word, I was harassed. The question is, he never said who was harassing him. It's certainly not the people because the Philippine government and the people would have benefited. The only one who was harassing him, who would have a reason to harass him when he was thinking of not selling it to Dennis Uy, was Dennis Uy. And Dennis Uy's connection with uh, President Duterte, that's where the harassment was coming from when he was having second thoughts about whether this deal was good. I don't believe that he ever had second thoughts, but even if you take him at his word, that he was having second thoughts because he knew how beneficial it would be for the Philippine government to assume this, then who was harassing him? That's the question that should be asked of uh, of Kuzi. You know, you said you were being harassed when you thought about the Philippines taking over uh, the Malampaya. Who was harassing you? Kawawa and if he was honest... Talaga, si, ano, si Secretary Kusi, kasi ang dami nang haharas talaga sa kanya. Sabi niya, itong issue to is a plain and simple political harassment coming from a group of Filipinos who are not even here in the Philippines. Sino yeah. po ba yung mga yon? <laughs> yeah. You know, and sinabi niya nga na he wants us to come there so that uh, we can be within reach of the Philippine justice system. So alam natin kung anong ibig sabihin niyan at alam natin kung bakit nga yung mga kasama namin sa Pilipinas, sila na rin na nagsabi, mabuti pa kaya kayo, hindi kayo pwedeng uh, uh, arrestuhin, uh, hulihin, at, you know, magbayad ng kar- karami daming ano. So, sabi, oh, okay kami, you know, this has been an issue ni Rendir to us, so pwede, okay, game. So, uh, we hope na uh, what this will start is people waking up that, you know, there is a very dystopian future ahead unless this deal is somehow stopped. And um, so that's what we're doing, everything we can. Um, siguro po, last question po to, Attorney. Kasama po natin ngayon ang Presidente ng Council of the Late of the Philippines, si Brother Roquel Ponte, na nagpalabas nga ng isang uh, statement in support of your filing of this uh, case, this Malampaya Stake Deal. Na talaga po naman na-pick up ito ng mga ng iba't ibang mga uh, media outfit na sinasabing nagsasama-sama ang mga iba't ibang mga grupo sinusuportahan po itong ginagawa ninyo. Ano po ba ang inyong challenge sa amin? Ano po bang maiiwanan yung hamon para sa mga Pilipino? Paano po kami mga ordinaryong mga Pilipino, mga ordinaryong katoliko ay makakatulong ha, dito sa pinaglalaban ninyo para sa amin dito sa Pilipinas? Okay? Meron po ba kayong uh, huling uh, uh, hamon at panawagan para sa amin? Yes, uh, I mean, nagagala kami na nagbigay ng support eh, yung grupo ninyo at nag-uumpisa na rin doon no? dahil pinag-uusapan at nagtatanong ng mga dapat tanungin and uh, ang kailangan is uh, ipagpatuloy ito lahat ng mga kandidato for the Senate lahat ng mga kandidato for president kailangan tanungin sila ano ang uh, kanilang posisyon tungkol sa ginawa ng uh, Department of Energy tungkol sa pagbenta ng ating uh, future no? na anong gagawin nila. So, kailangan maging national issue itong bagay na ito. At uh, kailangan magkaroon ng more organizations coming out, studying the issue at uh, magpalabas ng ano. It has to be uncomfortable. Kailangan, uh, you know, mag uh, they have to answer sa ginawa nila. I mean, what we have to understand also, no, the contract is supposed to be until 2024. But the Malampaya gas field that is estimated has enough oil for at least seven more years. Who's going to get it after the contract expires? Of course, Malampaya, the UC Malampaya group of Odena will get, and they're already asking for an extension beyond 2024. 
but also yung pag-develop and pag-explore ng other uh, gas fields, they have a leg up. They will control what other gas fields in the Palawan Sea are developed because of their control of the main Malampaya gas field. Kaya, ah, we have to do it now. It's too late if it was next year. Lalong lalo na if it's a government that is still run by the same PDP Laban uh, headed by Kusi. You know, he has the political uh, control and uh, senators in his party and the government of President Duterte are all PDP Laban na ang head is si Kusi. Kaya kailangan magtanong, magtanong, magprotesta, mag-issue ng statements da, uh, gaya ng ginawa ng laiko. At, uh, you know, hindi dapat tayo uh, mag-rest na uh, the, uh, God will provide. No, God said, you know, He will help those who help themselves. If we don't help ourselves by doing something about it, nothing will happen. We cannot just rely on prayer. Prayer has to be coupled with action by doing certain things to stop it and not just pray that somehow it will all work out. Hindi ganun ang, ang, um, ang, ang mangyayari or nangyayari in real life. Ako po, maraming maraming salamat po, attorney. At uh, yun po ang aming panawagan sa ating mga kasamahan sa Sangguniang Laiko ng Pilipinas at iba't iba pang mga uh, samahan dito sa Pilipinas. Sila, attorney uh, Rodel ay nagsimulang magpasabog. Uh, ngunit ito, hindi po ito isang whistle bomb. Okay? Yung whistle bomb, eh, talagang nauuna yung whistle. Eh. Boom! Ito po ay bomb whistle. Okay? <laughs> Nagpasabog sila, ngunit kailangan ngayong tuloy-tuloy yung pating pagsipol. Tuloy-tuloy yung ating pag-whistle. Kung may nalalaman pa po kayong iba pang mga bagay na makatutulong para i-push natin itong mga bagay nito, Tuloy-tuloy, mga, ka- mga kasamahan namin, mga laiko, mga kababayan natin, na kung mayroon pa kayo naralaman, ipadala nyo kagad sa Senado, padala nyo kila Atty. Rodel upang ta- mapatibay pa ang kasong ito para sa ating mga kababayan, para sa ating kinabukasan. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo, Atty. Kaya hindi hindi po lahat nakakakilala sa inyo pero ngayon po sikat na sikat na po kayo ngayon uh, bilang isang uh, uh, bomb whistler. <laughs> Nauna yung bomba eh. Boom! Tapos ngayon marami na tayong mga gusto sumipon at magsabing may nangyayari. Uh, kaya maraming maraming salamat po. Uh, we continue to pray for your protection and we pray that you continue to, to continue to do the good work that the Lord has begun in you in your life for our country. And in the name of uh, the Sangguniang Laiko ng Pilipinas, and together with our President, uh, Brother Roquel Ponte, maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo. Salamat po, Attorney. Salamat po. Thank you. Ayan po. Uh, nakarinig tayo ng uh, bomb whistler <laughs> hapong ito at uh, hinihingi nga nga natin na, na sana uh, uh, kung meron pang mga tao na gustong tumulong dito sa mga adhikain to ay gawin natin na tayo tumulong ng, ng mabuti. Um, malapit na po tayong matapos. My time is 3.41. Uh, wala hindi naman po tayo makakapagtanong kay <laughs> Atty. Rodel sapagkat uh, Uh, hiningi lang po natin na uh, ma- makapag-share siya sa atin sa hapong ito. Katanggalin ko lang po itong mga... Okay. Sa yung tupong ito, uh, gusto po natin sanang uh, mag, uh, manalangin lang. Uh, unang-una, itinataas lang po natin ang uh, isang uh, ina ng uh, ating uh, board member. Meron po tayong board member si Brother Albert Lotero. 
na ang kanyang nanay ay uh, sumakabilang buhay. So, hinihingi natin na sana maipagdasal siya. Pangalawa po ay um, gusto rin natin ipanalangin itong uh, November 15. Sa pagka sa November 15 po ay magkaka na ng mga mal- maliwanag. Ngayon lang po ay eh, may maliwanag nang nangyari dahil uh, nag-file na po yung isa ang si, um, si Ms. Sara Duterte bilang Vice President at nag-declare na rin sila na tatakbo silang magkatandem ni uh, Bongbong Marcos, President, Vice President. Mga bagay po na dapat nating uh, ipagdasal na sabi nga e eh, all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. So alam naman nating kumikilos sa patuloy ang Panginoon para sa atin. Pangatlo po ay patuloy din natin pinagdarasal yung mga kasama natin, mga kapatid natin na uh, dumadaan din sa hirap at iba mga may mga sakit at may iba naman ay may mga uh, pinagdadaan ng hirap sa kanilang mga kabuhayan. Tatawagin ko po ang aming uh, presidente, si Kuya Rokel. Kuya Rokel, pasensya na po. Uh, hindi ko kayo natawag kanina pero pwede ko po bang mahingi na bukod sa is- isang uh, medyo pangwakas na salita, eh, ilid na rin po ninyo yung ating uh, oras ng panalangin. Uh, kasama na rin po sa pasasalamat ng ibang mga resource speakers natin sa pagtayo ng sangguni ang laiko sa mga isyong ito. Uh, Brother Rokel, please. Uh, Unang-una, maraming salamat kay Bishop Makaraig uh, for his opening message. Uh, it really set the tone for our conversation for this afternoon. Salamat din po kay Calioni at uh, kay Attorney Rodel at sa mga nag-participate po, uh, uh, yung mga nagtanong o nagbigay ng kanilang uh, mga uh, kuro-kuro uh, at even yung presence lang po natin. Kaya, again, uh, we look forward to more conversations uh, that will happen in the month of November. And so, pagdasal lang po natin yung mga uh, prayer intentions na nabanggit na po ni Brother Chung. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Panginoon, maraming salamat po for blessing us with this afternoon. Uh, napakarami po namin narinig na makakatulong sa aming pagninilay-nilay at sa pagdesisyon namin, lalong-lal na po sa uh, napakahalagang uh, suliranin ng aming bansa at upang kami naman po ay uh, makatugon sa uh, mandato namin bilang uh, uh, katolikong laiko na tayo po ay also naninindigan at uh, nais uh, tumulong sa kaundaran ng ating bayan, lalong-lalo na sa pagangat sa ating mga mahihirap. Uh, unang-una po, pinagdadasal po namin ang uh, general repose of the soul of uh, uh, Mother Melchora, ang ina po ni Albert. Sana you will uh, extend your uh, hand uh, and welcome, welcome her into your heavenly kingdom. At uh, dinadasal din po namin ang lahat ng uh, mga intentions ng aming mga member organizations at lalong-lalo na po yung uh, aktibo naming pakikilahok upang kami ay makatulong sa aming bayan, sa aming simbahan at sa aming mga pamayanan. And lastly, Lord, uh, we thank you also and we lift up to you the uh, uh, very crucial months that is ahead of us. Sana po make it a blessed time for uh, all of us especially in our country, and our countrymen. And all this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Salamat maraming, po sa maraming, lahat. Maraming maraming salamat po, uh, Kuya Rokel. At uh, some announcements lang po para po tayo mga, makaproceed. Unang-una po, um, sa darating pong uh, November 20 at November 27 ay tuloy po ang ating mga conversations. Sususugan po natin ang mga napag-usapan natin ng Biennial Conference. So meron po tayong, kung ngayon po ay meron tayong agriculture agenda, ay susubukan natin makakuha naman ng education agenda na galing naman sa Catholic Educational Association of the Philippines at sa November 27 naman po ay yung ating uh, pagkilos politika ang ating pag-uusapan. So, pangalawa po, 
meron po tayong uh, recording nito sa CBCP News uh, FB page at kasasanggol ang like ng Pilipinas. Kung maaari po ay apuntahan ninyo yung CBCP News page na yon, panuuri ninyo, kunin nyo po, i-share po ninyo para po mapakinggan naman ng iba natin mga kasamahang mga mga like ko po. Okay? At pangatlo po na pinaka-importante, sa December 8 po, paghandaan na po natin to sa December 8 po, Feast of the Immaculate Conception, ay magkakaroon po ng National Consecration of Families to St. Joseph. Nangunguna po ang sagot ng like ko sa pananaw pananawagan na hinihingi po ang mga lay groups, family life groups, ay ihanda nila ang kanilang mga miyembro at ihanda ang kanilang mga pamilya para po uh, mag-consecrate kay St. Joseph on December 8. At yan po, ay pang ang consecration yan ay pangungunahan ng ating bagong presidente ng Catholic Bishops Conference of the Philippines, si Bishop Ambo, alas 11 po ng umaga na magkakaroon ng consecration ng mga pamilya sa kanilang uh, diocese na mapapanood po natin at maglo-launch po ng isang bagong movement sa Pilipinas. Ang tawag po sa movement na yan eh, The Men of St. Joseph. The Men of St. Joseph. Pagkatapos po niyan, ay alas 12, misa na po sa iba't ibang mga dioceses at mga parokya na kung saan marami din pong uh, doon maaaring gawin din ang consecration naman ng mga pamilya sa kanilang mga parishes at kanilang mga dioceses at uh, i-announce din po kung paano makapagsimula ng grupo ng Men of St. Joseph. Ipapalabas po namin ang sulat na ito kasama po ng isang uh, package ng libro ay isang novena na pwede pong gamitin ng mga pamilya para makapaghanda so that they can have a spiritual preparation prior to the national consecration upang makapaghanda ang buong pamilya sa kanilang pag-aalay ng kanilang buhay kay San Jose bilang spiritual father po natin. Nako, marami po tayong uh, natutunan ngayon. Maraming maraming salamat muli po kay Calioni at sa lahat po ng mga tumugon sa ating uh, invitation ngayon. At uh, ganun pa man po. Salamat din po, uh, Your Excellency Bishop uh, Makaraeg. Uh, alam, gusto rin namin makadalaw naman dyan para mas maging live ang ating kwentuhan. Okay? And uh, hopefully, uh, matatapos din po ang pandemang ito, tayo po yung magkikita ng face to face. Reach out kayo, all hands on deck, sapagkat napakalaki ng stake natin ngayon. Kailangan kumilos ang mga laiko, kailangan kumilos ang mga Pilipino sa iba't ibang mga area. Ngunit ang panawagan, maghanda tayo sa eleksyon, ihalal natin ang mga karapat-dapat na mga mamumuno sa atin. Maraming maraming salamat po sa ngalan ng sabuling laiko ng Pilipinas. Ito po si June Cruz. Thank you very much po. Salamat po. God bless po. Thank you very much. Thank you po. Thank you po.